Welcome back everybody, I'm Nurse Nick and we're gonna conquer antimicrobials today with pharmacology. So my name is Nick, um, I have a history, a history as an emergency department nurse, I'm an ACL, SBS, and PAL certified instructor for the American Heart Association, and I also teach pharmacology at a local college. So today we're gonna talk about antimicrobials, diving right in. Uh, what you need to learn is there's some rules that can kind of apply when you're answering nursing questions related to antibiotics. So first, uh, you want to identify or you want to get blood and urine cultures before you actually give the antibiotic. Why is that? Well, the antibiotic can put, potentially kill the good bacteria, or excuse me, the bad bacteria, the infection. So you want to draw that off before you start the antibiotic. Uh, why do we draw blood cultures? Well, blood cultures go into like a, a warmer incubator Generally, it takes two to three days for bacteria or whatever kind of growth, it might be viral, whatever it is, or fungal, uh, what kind of growth to exist so we can identify what it is and we can know specifically how to treat it. Uh, how does that help the patient? Well, if we give them some kind of empiric treatment, because we assume, uh, based on their symptoms and history, if we can give them this antibiotic and it doesn't work, the blood culture, the urine culture, the sputum culture will come back and we'll know which antibiotic to specifically give the patient to make sure we kind of cure the disease or get rid of it. So most antibiotics are very, very harmful to your kidneys. Uh, so if they're harmful to your kidneys, you want to check your creatinine levels, right? You remember your BUN and your creatinine are your renal levels, levels, but your creatinine specifically tells you more of your renal failure. So what was your range for your creatinine? You would say 0 0.6 to 1.2, very good. Uh, so most antibiotics affect your kidneys. I will say the exception is, is TB drugs have a lot of problems with hepatotoxicity. So you need to remember that. So in general, not every drug, in general, you can think antibiotics are, are impact my kidneys, uh, but TB drugs are very hard on your liver, all right? Um, if it's hard on your kidneys, it can create dark concentrated urine. You might get crystalloids. Uh, so you always wanna increase fluid. People on antibiotics typically kind of get dehydrated, they get dried out. Always encouraged to drink a lot of fluid. And um, antibiotics can kill good flora that's in your GI tract. And if it does that, this puts you at risk for developing diarrhea. This diarrhea can lead into C. diff or C. difficile, all right? Uh, if somebody does start having diarrhea as a result of an antibiotic, generally you want to start to tell them to encourage them to consume more probiotics. Now there are some medications as a probiotic, um, but also something they can do at home is um, eat some yogurt, like good cultured yogurt, yogurts. Not all yogurts gonna have uh, uh, probiotic in it, right? With antibiotics, you know the rules, take the full prescription, don't stop after three or four days when you feel better. The problem is, is some, whatever bug or microbial is still kind of floating around and you can kind of build a resistance. That's, how, that's what leads to MRSA, versa, all those things. Um, Another rule with antibiotic is a lot of NCLEX questions you're going to see uh, contraception use with antibiotics. Sometimes when that comes up, it's because contraceptives, uh, are they decrease their effectiveness when somebody is on antibiotics. Milk or calcium may affect absorption. That's a lot of medications. Um, look for an inflammatory response with reaction. So antibiotics can generally have allergic reactions. They use a couple different words like urticaria, urticaria, U-R-T-I-C-A-R-I-A, or pruritus, urticaria pruritus. Urticaria means the rash or the hives, and pruritus is the itching, okay? So urticaria, urticaria or pruritus is the rash of the hives and the itching. So the first medication we're gonna talk about is the sulfamethic, meth, sulfamethic, Sometimes it gets tricky. Sulfa methoxazole or trimethorphan. Uh, this medication is a sulfa medication. We talk about this with anti-diabetic medications that one of them was a sulfonuria. This medication does have um, hypersensitivity or photosensitivity to the sun or photosensitivity, which puts, makes you, I am all over the place today. This trimethorphan is a sulfa medication. A lot of people can have a, uh, allergic reactions to this. This medication causes photosensitivity. And if you have photosensitivity, you might be uh, more sensitive to the sun and might put you at potential risk for having a sunburn. So you should wear sunscreen. This medication does, uh, it's harder on your kidneys, 
cause of dehydration. Uh, make sure you increase your fluid because you're at risk, going to be at risk for crystal urea. And this medication can cause blood dyscrasias. Um, what you need to know about that, it's kind of just abnormal material that happens in your blood. So um, it can mess with your kidneys. You don't want that. Make sure you drink a lot of fluid with that medication. So the next medication is quinolone. This is, it's, it is a quinolone. This medication is called ciprofloxacin. Uh, ciprofloxacin is given a lot for UTIs, all right? So with this medication and with all of these antibiotics, they have like one or two rules that you typically need to remember with them, okay? All the antibiotics in general cause dehydration. They all generally affect your kidneys, except for the TB antibiotics. But with ciprofloxacin, uh, this one cause GI upset and cause that super infection with the C. diff or diarrhea leads to C. diff. Um, this one can cause a photosensitivity but there's a, a lot of questions on, on different, different areas that uh, ciprofloxacin puts you at risk for Achilles uh, tendon rupture. So, you know, an example of this, if you have somebody that comes to a doctor and they say, you know, they've had surgery on their Achilles tendon before, or they've got tendonitis or any issues with their tendons whatsoever, it might be a contraindication to getting ciprofloxacin, all right? The next medication is phenoazoparidine. This is known as pridium. A lot of people know this is azo, or you can get this pridium over the counter. And this makes your uh, urine orange or red. A lot of people are familiar with this. So you wanna educate the patient that this can stain your clothes, but this medication, why, is we, why do we give um, pridium or pheno, uh, phenoazoparidine? This actual medication is given for an analgesic, analgesic for the burning related to UTIs. Generally, people have pain, frequency, and, your, uh, and urgency. Azo, that you can buy over the counter, or phenoazoparidine, which is peridium, is gonna be prescribed if this makes your orange, excuse me, your urine orange or red in discoloration. The next, uh, next medication is metronidazole. Metronidazole is also known as flagell, all right? So metronidazole can have this metallic taste. Uh, this one affects your kidneys a little bit more. So this can cause dark urine, uh, dizziness, and headache. But what are a lot of the questions? This is another antibiotic. So metronidazole is also flagell. Metronidazole is an antibiotic. It can cause metallic taste. But a lot of things are the questions that uh, revolve around metronidazole in addition to killing good flora, risk for diarrhea, superinfection, things like that is you don't wanna drink alcohol. It, this one's huge. You don't really wanna drink alcohol with any medication. And generally, if alcohol comes up, like what's contraindication for your patient to drink? You know, alcohol is a pretty good answer for no matter what medication it is. But specifically, metronidazole or flagell, you don't wanna drink alcohol. It can make you very, very sick, all right? So the next medication is gonna be the imipenem, celastin, or primaxin. This medication is for serious bacterial infections. It's a broad spectrum. Again, it's an antibiotic. So it can cause GI upset and cause the rash. What's the word for rash? That's urticaria, very good. Uh, it can cause the super infection. What do I mean by super infection? It can lead to C. diff. What you should also know is when it kills that good flora, uh, this happened to my daughter, like she was on antibiotics, she's a two year old, one, one and a half year old, excuse me. If she's on antibiotics, it can actually develop into a yeast infection or some kind of fungal infection or a rash. So you wanna look for that because it kills off that good uh, bacteria fighting stuff. So Promaxin or Celast and Imipenem, it can cause a rash, super infection, can lead to C. diff, but the, all these, a lot of these can actually lead to um, yeast infections as well. Um, you wanna look for sensitivities, uh, penicillin and cephalosporin, allergy sensitivity for this medication. And this may cause an enhanced anticoagulation effect with Coumadin or Warfarin. And you definitely need to know that, right? So penicillin. Uh, penicillin, a lot of the medications in the penicillin family are going to have the suffix of the cillin. So penicillin, amoxicillin. Um, this is also piperacillin. So this medication can cause, guess what again, GI upset. Uh, you can have allergic reactions. Uh, so again, allergic reactions, uh, the rash or the hives that pop up, we, uh, pop up, we call that what? We call that urticaria. And then the itching, we're gonna call pruritus. Very good. Uh, this does again cause renal toxicity, which just goes along with what we've known about the antibiotics. 
You don't want to give this uh, medication penicillins uh, to people that have a history of allergies to cephalosporins. And this medication does also enhance the effects of warfarin or coumadin. So penicillins and cephalosporins, they're kind of like fifth cousins. If they're allergic to one, they're probably going to be allergic to the other one. So you want to look or watch out, be cautious with allergic reaction to cephalosporins if you're given this penicillin. The next medication is cephalosporins. This can be your, your Keflex, but a lot of these medications start with CEP. Septamide, Septamir, all these medications, Cephapim, all these medications start with CEP, C-E-F. This is a very common term with all these cephalosporins. So another example is Keflex, but the cephalosporins generally start with C-E-F. This can cause GI upset, which again, we keep seeing. Uh, look for allergic reactions which could be dyspnea, which means shortness of breath, or the rash, what's the other word we use for rash? Urticaria. This can also lead to a super infection. What's the super infection? It can lead to C. diff. But with what's the one or two things we really wanna remember this is cephalosporins. We don't give this to people that might have, or that have an allergic reaction or sensitivity with penicillins. Cephalosporins, we don't give people that have an allergic reaction to penicillins. Penicillins, we don't give the people with a history of allergic reactions to cephalosporins. Again, with this medication, you don't want to drink any alcohol, take with food. Make sure they take the full, um, the full dose of antibiotic over time. And the last one I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be vancomycin. Vancomycin is a big dog. Vanc um, uh, get treat serious infection. We get treated for MRSA, C. diff, sepsis, a lot of things. Uh, adverse reactions with vancomycin, it can cause ototoxicity. And if it can cause ototoxicity, what does oto mean? Oto means ear, right? Otoscope, scope in the ear. Ototoxicity can cause what? Tinnitus. What's tinnitus mean? It means ringing of the ears. Again, it's an antibiotic. This one can cause renal, uh, renal toxicity. What blood test should I look for? Probably your creatinine. What's the range for your creatinine? 0.6 to 2. Uh, you do want to look for infusion reactions, phobitis. Infusion reaction can be red man syndrome. So what vancomycin, because this is a strong vesicant, this is a strong drug. Um, it can release histamines in your vessels. And when it releases the histamines, histamines cause inflammation, right? So that's what causes the, the redness. It generally goes up in people's trunk and torso. Uh, red man syndrome, uh, a lot of people don't have serious, uh, you know, dyspnea or it's not like an anaphylactic reaction. They just become like very warm, red. And there's a couple things you can do. Either you can slow down the infusion rate, which obviously you want to always consult a physician about, you know, slowing rates and things like that. Or sometimes you can actually Y in um, a secondary, like a normal saline to dilute it as well. But generally diluting it and slowing it down is gonna be the safest thing for your patient. The doctor might give some kind of, you know, Benadryl and antihistamine, or uh, uh, maybe even a steroid or something like that, depending on how bad the reaction is. Uh, with vancomycin, also with gentamicin, we'll talk about it again later. Uh, vancomycin, you wanna do a peak in a trough. Uh, this medication is actually measured for therapeutic levels. We can draw a vanc level. So vancomycin, I think of a peak and a trough. I think peak is the highest mountain and trough is something low that pigs eat out of or something, right? So uh, peaks, you want to draw this lab when it's actually highest in your system. Uh, your peak, you want to draw uh, at least an hour, or excuse me, about 30 minutes after the infusion has been put in your patient, right? So Let's give an example. Let's talk about peak and trough for vancomycin. Vancomycin is an antibiotic, red man syndrome, inflammation. Let's talk about peak and trough. You draw a bank level. The peak is when it's highest. highest. It's when you know somebody's got a bag order, you know, once a day or Q12 generally, uh, twice a day. Well, they had medication 12 hours ago. You're about to give it again. If you draw a peak, it's going to be after you infuse it when it's freshly circulating in your blood. Your trough is gonna be right before you infuse this to see when it's lowest in your bloodstream. It's been the longest time since the last dose that you gave. I hope that makes sense. And generally they draw those every, every I don't know, 72 hours, something like that. So moderate uh, trough and peak levels, but why is that important? Because this is a strong vesicant, it's a strong drug. 
So it's probably gonna be harder on, antibiotics are usually harder on your, on your kidneys. So you don't wanna cause renal failure or anything like that. Uh, vein trough should be between 10 and 20. Uh, if they're greater than 20, you wanna hold it, you wanna contact the physician. And a lot of times, uh, pharmacy. A lot of times pharmacy get involved and they can actually adjust the dose according to that bank level. So red man syndrome, ototoxicity, peak and trough levels. It's another antibiotic. They all generally affect your kidneys except for the TB drugs. Um, and then they, they treat super serious super infections like MRSA and C. diff. So my name is Nick. This will be the end of this video. There's going to be another one for part two. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks, guys.